Good day. My name is Peter. Welcome to the VAT Short and Sweet series where we explore the world of value-added taxes. The series consists of several short presentations that build upon each other. Today we're at presentation number 15 of 15 in our journey. See the presentation topics covered in this series for a full list of the presentations. The verbal script is not a verbatim of the written text. You can pause the video at any time to read the full text. Common themes. Number one, keeping books and records. VAT laws tend to require keeping certain books and records. There are two key elements to consider here. First, the format of the books and records. Second, the length of time the books and records must be kept, i.e. archived. The law may prescribe the form or content of the books and records. In the first instance, a specific document must be maintained. For example, when reporting is required, the VAT authority may have a prescribed form that must be completed. In other cases, the specific form is not prescribed, but the content of the document is prescribed. For example, in a case where a business issues a receipt for an item sold, the VAT law may prescribe the information that must appear on the receipt. Furthermore, VAT laws tend to prescribe the length of time that a particular document must be kept. Number two, dealing with inquiries from a VAT authority. VAT laws tend to bestow a right to a VAT authority to make various inquiries to establish compliance with a particular VAT law. The inquiries often fall into two categories, administrative inquiries and criminal inquiries. It is very important to clearly establish the type of inquiry that is being made by a VAT authority. If a person is not sure what type of inquiry is being made or how to deal with the inquiry, it is best to seek out the assistance of a qualified and trustworthy professional. The consequences of dealing with an inquiry improperly may be severe. Number three, challenging decisions of a VAT authority. VAT laws tend to allow a person to challenge a decision made by a VAT authority against them. There may be more than one avenue available to address a disagreement. In certain cases, pursuing the grievance in one manner may prevent a person from pursuing the matter by another avenue later. The best approach may be to ladder up from the simplest, less invasive approach to the more formal, involved approach. If a person is not sure how to deal with the process, it is best to seek out the assistance of a qualified and trustworthy professional. Number four, application of interests and penalties. VAT laws tend to impose a variety of interests and penalties for various violations of the law. Once interests and, and or penalties have been levied on a person, a thorough review of the cause and manner of calculation is warranted. If a person is not sure how to deal with the process, it is best to seek out the assistance of a qualified and trustworthy professional. Conclusion. Respecting all the requirements prescribed by the applicable VAT law of your country is very important. Special attention should be given to the manner, length of time, and deadlines prescribed. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next presentation.